welcome back to another episode of the Knee Slap and K-Pop podcast. I'm Sammy. With me today is Kayla. Hello. And we are finally doing a top 10 showdown about K-pop. Yes, finally. Finally, we made a K-pop theme. Well, we haven't been running this series that long, but we did no, decide to bring in like the K-pop. it's like the third episode. <laughs> but we did decide to bring K-pop to it finally, so here we are. Well, that's only because Taskmaster's harder to come up with. Than <laughs> I know. K-pop. This is originally supposed to be Taskmaster Tax, and I was like, I don't have a list yet. So <laughs> here we that are. That list is way harder than this. Way list. harder so this to This list make. is the top 10 K pop covers ever. Yes. Easier. You think that'd be a hard list. An easier list to make, weirdly. Mm hmm. So, what is top 10 showdown? We essentially give our top 10s of a certain topic. Yes. And that's you tell all it us is. if we're wrong. Which we're not. We're not. I, we're right. You're wrong. Shut up. In the words of Eugene Lee, like, <laughs> Eugene Lee Yang. There we go. That's the, that's his name. But uh, this one, we're just like, I think one, we tried to, one, limit the amount of produce on this list. Yes. Which is what I did. I've got I one. I have two. I've limited, I lim- for me, I tried to limit it per series. So I've got one cover from all of produce and one cover from all of the kingdom queendom. I I tried to limit survival shows as a whole because I thought that would be less interesting of a list to make. So I think I have two from the whole produce series and then one from like everything else is mainly a one. I also tried to limit it to one per group. Yeah, I also limited one per group. Yep, because I could have put like a lot of um, certain groups on here like this could I could have like two or three covers per one group but I yeah didn't want to do that that wouldn't be as interesting that would be less way less interesting so we like we like the variety here we like variety on this podcast yes even if we have to make it happen and then if your question is what are the dinosaurs for don't worry about it they're here for the dinosaurs are here for vibes they're little friends the dinosaurs are the mascots of top 10 showdown. They are. They will be here every time because we reuse these PowerPoints every time we do this series. It's so. literally the same PowerPoint we keep editing. Yes, exactly. Keeps it easy. <laughs> and the other thing is we don't know what each other's lists are. So they're as we much don't. a surprise to each other as they are to you. Exactly. Which is also why there's no uniformity on what information we put. No. We... Which is why the PowerPoints look different. They do. Essentially. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? How about you go first? Okay, so my number 10, and I don't remember the order most of my list is in, so it's going to be a surprise for all of <laughs> it's us. It's a surprise for everybody, because neither do I. I made this like a week ago. Yep. Uh, so my number 10 is a uh, Golden Child's Ooh. K-pop mashup from the 2019 Dream Concert. So there are a handful of covers that I really like that are like a mashup of several different songs. Mm. Um, Those are always fun. Yeah, this one in particular I really, really like, because they did this thing where they did... um. One song from a group that debuted in 2012, which is EXO, and then they did a 2013, like, um, or not a 2012, I think 2014 or something like that. But they did one group per, like, one group song per year that was a debut song, or not a debut uh-huh. song, but a group that debuted every year up until Golden Child in 2017, so I thought that was really cool. That's fun. I do think it is a really, really good mashup of the songs as well. Like, whoever remixed the songs and put them together did a fantastic job doing it. So it's one of the more, like, surprising and, like, very fun and engaging covers. Um, because it's not just a straight-up cover of one song. They had to... They're covering five different songs here. So they had to mm-hmm. learn, essentially, a whole new choreography because they're all of these songs put together. Um, songs in here, by the way, if you're not watching the PowerPoint, are BTS's Blood, Sweat, and Tears, NCTU's Boss, Seventeen's Boom Boom, EXO's Call Me Baby, and Got Seven Sever Ever. So overall, it's a I think good mashup. It's a good mashup. It also doesn't have any duds in because th- that's the thing with a lot of mashups is every once in a while it's like, why'd you do this song? The song ain't good, which right. is why I love some end of the year mashups and dislike some other ones because it's like, ugh, that one again. Yeah, yeah. But this one I really enjoy, and these are all like classics at this. Eh, never ever not as much, but like yeah, they, every other the God one. The God Seven like, one is the only one that's like maybe, that's a, maybe a little bit boring, but it fits. It that song fits really well into it the also, mashup. And also, it fits really well for 2019. Definitely. We are looking back in 2024 where, look at where GOT7 is compared to the rest of these oh, groups. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So my number 10 is 17's Dolkamane, originally by Mamamoo, from Music Bank in 2017. Mm-hmm. 
So this is, uh, surprisingly, Mamamoo and Seventeen have switched songs multiple times. There's also a good cover of Egotistic that they did. Nice. But this one I really enjoy, mainly because it almost feels like it's their song. Right. Them and Mamamoo have this thing where they can both make the song feel extremely organic. Mm -hmm. And, like, they don't change the song. They don't change anything about it. But it just feels very them. And I really enjoy that. They remix it to fit their members, to fit the sheer quantity of their members as opposed to the four people of Mamamoo. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I really like it. And I think Mamamoo did adore you as the reversal, which was also very fun. And they did like more of a ballad adore you, which is eh, less fun, but still, I really enjoy this. I think they remix the choreo and it's really fun. So I don't know if I've ever seen this cover, to be honest. It's it's a good it's it's old now because it's 2017. But yeah, no, I really enjoy it. I need to look it up because it feels like that would be a song that Seventeen could cover really well. Oh, like, vi vibes why it feels like good song for Seventeen. Seventeen was I don't know if I want to call Pioneer because obviously there were people that did it before, but like the transition from doing only cover the female songs in drag, you're right, to right, covering actual like covering female songs right. the way you would cover anything else. Seventeen did that a bunch super early in their career because they also had another one I considered. But I like this one more. They also did a girl group, like, mashup. Mm -hmm. And that had stuff like ice cream cake and, uh, what's it called? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Lionheart. That's the one. Uh-huh. They had a bunch of songs like that on there, and they did that. And I also enjoy that one. Right. This one, I think, is just more fun. Mm-hmm. Plus, it fits them more, because that was, like, super early, like, baby 17. Right, right. Nice, classy song for them. Nice, classy song for mm -hmm. them. Recommend. All right. Your number so nine? My number nine is Voice Planet Zoom. Oh, Voice Planet Zoom. <laughs> A cover that we have spoken um, extensively about already. One of the best covers of last year, generally. Um, so this is obviously um, the original song is Zoom by Jesse. And in here is Kaita, Ali, Park Hyun Bean, Haruto, and Mubuti, all icons of their own. Merit. Icons in their own right. Yes. Um, um, it's great. Everything about it is great. Uh, this song made me go actually listen to Zoom by Jesse, made me like the song more. So I feel like there's if it a cover new appreciation makes me like the song Zoom. more. Yeah, then it's a great cover. <laughs> I mean, it's a full remix. It sounds nothing, almost nothing like the Jesse. It doesn't. And also, they don't sound like Jesse in the song. So that's no, another thing. They also don't try it. to sound like Jesse in the song, which I Thankfully. think is only a positive. Right, right. Not that I think Jesse sounds bad in that song, but someone trying to imitate Jesse's voice right. sounds like it would be hell. Feels like it's a bad idea, just generally. But yes, great cover. Um, we've talked about it a lot. Uh,. We will Nothing else to, to say, talk really. about it endlessly. Yeah, we will talk about it probably years to come. It's an icon. Mm -hmm. So my number nine, I forget what it is. Oh, also involving Jesse. Oh, Jesse, nice. It is the Hyolin, Ailey, and Jesse cover of Bang Bang. Ooh. Original by Jesse J. Art and Grande, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. At the 2014 NBC Music That's Awards. That's a good one. I forgot so about that entirely. They kept covering Bang Bang and K-pop. They the love that. K-pop loves that song. And the problem was either it'd be a dance cover, which we didn't put, I at least didn't put dance covers on my list. I don't think I have any either in mine. Just because I think that, like, they're good and I like them, but it's not a full cover. Feels a little bit, yeah. It doesn't feel like as the same caliber as, like, a regular yeah. cover. And the thing is, you gotta put the right people to cover this song because it is a big song to sing it is for and sure Hyolin and Ailey have the voices for it yeah other people because that's the one thing I'll say about and Jessie like, can produce. do the Nicki Minaj she can she's very good yeah um that's the one thing I'll give the produce cover right it, it feels more of a dance cover yeah it was more of a it was like a full dance cover I think it's like, meant to be a dance cover probably I can, and I think they they sing it, but, but I do think it is originally it. a dance cover, yeah. Yeah. But, like, overall, these girls are singing. Mm -hmm. And, like, Hyolin and Ailey, I absolutely adore. They're oh, great. absolutely great. I mean, Ailey, one of the only people I've ever heard K-pop, not K-pop cover, I Will Always Love You. Oh, well, yeah. That one's another one I really enjoy, not on my list. But, like, Mo's a front runner for me. Mm -hmm. 
This one, I just, I, I feel, one, no one ever, it's so old. It's four, it's ten years old at this point. Right. No one's gonna talk about this. It's, it's these people. I think, like, no K-pop, no new K-pop fan even knows who Ailey is. So, I just think that it's, like, lost to time. And I think we need to bring it back. The kids need to know. Yes. And that also feels like a, a perfect trio of people to cover that song. Like, it was, oh, they absolutely. Could, that's like a, those are the people who should be singing that. I feel like a lot of times now, the people that are chosen to do cover, I mean, not that these three were not in 2014 at the top of their game. Right. They were. But at the same time now, I feel like we're just picking, well, who's the hot shot right now? Right, right. Not it's, they're not thinking about who should be covering the song. Mm -hmm. And these three definitely should have been covering this song. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yep. All right, your number eight. My number eight is "And Flying's Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa. Um, the, honestly pretty basic cover like it is it's nothing very spectacular about it but other it is than a band cover it's a band cover of this song and it's a really really good band cover of this song um and i feel like for context is another thing that this cover came out around the time that they just added dong sung to the group and the song has like Ooh, a very yeah. noticeable bass line and so i felt like they picked this song in particular to show off their, like their new bassist and i thought that was really cool yeah. and fun um but Song and Sang Hub also have, like, a great vocal range for this song specifically. Um, they do a really great job with the vocals and the song also. I mean, it sounds different than the original because now it's a band cover, but I, I feel like the arrangement of it is really, really good. Um, and Flying also does, like, a bunch of covers. And Flying, I feel like. yeah. I feel like they cop uh, and Flying's a big cover Specifically, the ones group. I keep seeing is that I keep seeing them do anime covers, which is not this. They do a lot of anime they covers. Lot of they do a covers. lot of anime J-pop covers. They do a handful of ones, like the Golden Child one, that are, like, mashups mm -hmm. of different songs. And I think all of those for them are also um, really good as well. They've done, like, a Queen one, a Michael Jackson one, an anime one, a, like, a K-pop one. Like, they do a lot Didn't of those Didn't they do an Olivia covers. Rodrigo one, or am I making that up? No, they have one that's, like, Seven Rings by our and, like, something else. There's, like, multiple songs in there, but yeah. I don't think it's... No, they did do an Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo, Rodrigo one. It's Driver's License, Deja Vu, and Good For You. Mm. I feel like... It's short, but yeah. I, I was like, did I remember that or did I make that up? They did their League of Legends ones from last they year. Did, they did do a League of Legends ones. I remember that one as well. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, they they do good covers. They're a good cover group. They do a lot of them. Uh, I feel like bands, I mean, bands do covers generally really well. do tend to do a lot of good covers. Yeah, definitely. They can't there's only so there's only so much they can do outside of this. Right, right. I don't actually remember what my number eight is. Cool. Well, well, All of it's we'll gone. find out. Oh. Oh. For a new season two replay. Ooh. Baby replay. Baby. Uh originally by Shiny. This has What a lineup uh, of people. Right? I looked up this Holy lineup crap. and also it's uh Connie from One Us, Ren from Newest, Lee uh Guantian, who's a soloist, uh Huang Woon from One Us, Theo essentially mm -hmm. now from Idol Producer slash uh <laughs> slash nine percent slash next slash now the a judge, now judge on, on uh Asia, Asia Super, Super Young. Young. Yep. yep, yep. And then Justin also of insert the, the thing I said of, about Theo into those Justin. Other things, yeah. <laughs> insert all those things here i have always loved this performance i thought it's one of the best things from season two does not get the, ever the recognition it deserves no it, it does is not. one of the only covering replay is a thing that people do constantly and it's so hard to get right without coming off as weird i know i feel like a lot i don't like a lot of replay covers because they're just a little bit weird they just come off as the weird. vibes like are not right on a lot of them even the other team that did this came off as weird because if you're slightly too old mm -hmm. it it's comes weird. off as weird it's weird if you're slightly too young it comes off as weird definitely yeah if you have the wrong vibe as a group it comes off as weird uh, the only person on here that could have thing, but, like, Ren is still youthful in this. He right, still, like, right. fits weirdly, even though he's the oldest person it's, there. Yes. It's a lot, and I think that this just does perfectly. I think just, this is Justin's star-making performance. It is. I love that he's for him. He's adorable. He's so adorable. And, like, look at the people in this. These are icons. But it's such a crazy lineup looking back on I it. I mean everything about season if you put two is season, crazy. Anything back about on season, season two. two of produce in a list like this. Yeah. You're gonna this is gonna happen it's every crazy. single time. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I absolutely love it. Uh, it's incredible. It's amazing. We love, we, we love. live, we thrive. And this is this is a star making performance for everybody. But, like, Justin thrives. Yep. Yep, yep. He does. He's he's literally so cute in that performance. He's the cutest, he's the cutest. boy. And also, just, like, everyone does the job super well. Again, I don't... This should have... I don't understand how so many... I understand why, but there's not that I ever enjoy the fact that there's always one produce child right. in every season that becomes the produce child. I know. But I don't understand how it wasn't Justin. Yeah. You know? I know. Like, it should have been a produce should have been, been Justin. It shouldn't have been Justin because I prefer the well, fact that we got true. title producer Justin. I know, because we do get it. Because we do, but it could have been. been. And it but really could have been, been. Instead of who's Guan Lin, I think, was the child. Guan Lin of that was the season. child. Yeah. It wasn't even a foreign thing, because Guanlin was also foreign. I know, so they really could have just it. done a one-for-one one swap. And it could have been Justin. Yeah. But still, I think it all worked out for the best. It did. It did work out for him. And Theo. Love. I think it worked out for the- everyone, really. It worked out for literally everybody Everyone involved. in that performance worked out well for them, so here we are. Yep. All right. All right. Um, My number seven is, I think, the only girl group on or female cover on this list <laughs> um for me which is dreamcatcher's lucky strike um Ooh. by maroon five i forgot about this one it's a really good cover it i feel like this so this is both a vocal and a dance cover so they created a whole choreography to it which i think is really fun yeah, like really it cool was, it's not so much a cover as right. a choreography it's like well they also they it's a vocal and a dance cover but they had to create a whole extra choreography. I feel like if you didn't know it was a Maroon 5 song, it you could have think it was a Dreamcatcher song. Like, the arrangement and everything um, really fits them as a group. At the time, this is when Dreamcatcher was still doing more of, like, a their creepy, only their creepy stuff. Um, yeah. So it was, like, kind of refreshing in that way that it wasn't exactly what they were doing. As opposed to where we are now with Dreamcatcher. Yeah, I don't really know where we are I don't are even with know Dream- where we are now. I don't know now. what to call Grease and Dreamcatcher, really. I remember we were really into Dreamcatcher. I was. And it kind of just fell and off. And then they just got kind of weird, and so here we are. And, like, not as good. Yeah. But this is, um, I think, a great, it was a great song choice to cover. Um, It's really good. Choreography is really good. Uh, Song, really good. So... This is what I always come back to because it's, I think, one of my favorite of a song that it, like, it sounds like it could be their song. It feels like one of those for me. Um, oh, no, it does it. feel very much like a, like a B-side on the, at the, of the time. Right, Dreamcatcher right. Albums. I like it. It's really fun. I, I, I hadn't remembered this cover until you literally brought it up right now. Yeah. Huh? It is one of those unlocked memories lost to time in yeah. my brain, but I love it. It is a really good cover yes. for them. Only, it fits them really well. Only girl group cover to make it on this list for me. So oh, here it is. I think if you want to count only girl group covers, we already had mine. Yeah. The um other ones that I had in contention um mm-hmm. was Dream also Dreamcatcher's cover of Really Really by Winter. I really like that mm. version of Really Really. And also N Mix's Hey Mama. I think both of those were were pretty close in contention, but I I didn't like either of them enough to put them on the list. So. I mean, the other ones I had in contestant was I did also really like the Hey Mama performance yeah. that was up there. For me, it was also the uh, Pledis Girls produce audition with Bang. Oh, that's really good. That's really that one good I really like. Yeah, yeah. And then also, oh my girl, Destiny. But that's not yeah, what I chose yeah. from Queendom Kingdom. Right. But that's an icon. That was thing. that was also what kicked that one off of my list because I have another yeah. another one from that series on here. But that I one was also close for, for it, me but too. But it was so good. Yeah. And it's but it also got kicked out for another. We'll get to we'll it. We'll get there. So yeah. my number seven <laughs> is Boys Planet Zoo. Hell yeah! Look oh. at this lineup. What are that? <laughs> Look at them. You got guys and even. We have Ollie and what. What is long nine? Long nine. <laughs> We're gonna roll with it because you know we haven't seen the end of Asia Super right, yet. Right, but Ollie's there, so <laughs> Ollie thrived. Uh, and they got Haruto in twos, thriving, mm-hmm. thriving, and Bumu TTT. Yep, love that. I mean, I think this is just a perfect performance for that whole season. Yeah, I don't. What else do you say? It's perfection. It's great, and it it's a song that given to the wrong people it. It's not a difficult song. No. It's not. 
it it doesn't ha- it has flashy moments but nothing too crazy right it's not a because there are songs on this show because it's not like for example there was tomboy in this round there was other things in this round that were like these are the star making performances right zoom was not one of those it was not where everybody that was number one was gonna go but this gave all of them their moment sh- made all of them shine they didn't all get something out of it but they should have they thrived they did they, they thrived, elevated thriving. this and I feel like this song, um, given to a different group of people, very easy to misinterpret Crashes the vibe. and burns? You know, very easy to misinterpret the vibe of the song. Oh, I, I can see them people. trying to make this sexy. Yeah, sexy or I like- I can see them trying to make this sexy. Or we, go too, so we go too badass and it's like, eh, this is like not the point. Like, it, there's a lot of ways you can do this song badly, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. All right, we already right. talked about Zoom. So what's yes. your number six? So my number six is Love in the Ice from Mix mm. Nine. Um, <laughs> Look so at that lineup. The, this is also, less fun it's a than less, the other It's a less interesting lineup, but it's still quite a lineup. So this is done by Insong and Heejun of K&K, Dong Hoon of Ace, Hyun Soo of Dice, Chandong of Romance, Ishin of One Us, and Soho of One Us. Um, what a crazy lineup of people. Also, definitely my favorite vocal performance ever done on a survival show like it's ins- oh it it's is insanely good incredible not it's only the best incredible. not only the best cover of love in the ice ever sung but probably the best vocal performance to ever be done on a survival show i it mean is here's the thing insane. because of recent occurrences tvxq couldn't even do this no as there's well as no they way tv recent tvxq can sing this song i'm as talking well as they tvxq do. of now i'm not yeah. talking tvxq of when they made love on the no. ice. love in the ice current tvxq lo- could never could not sing this anymore could never um it's incredible it's the best thing mix nine it's the best thing to come out of mix it is the only thing to come out of mix nine that i ever left in it i like know a big impact that this on is me. the one where i was just like oh shit <laughs> like, it's so incredible good. it's insane it's so good the only thing i can say is go watch it because it's insane it's insane and then it's like I look at and like was... look at this list of people these are all new goo and most like yeah. half disbanded boy yeah. groups at this point yeah, and but also, but these are the, the vocalists the from vocal, all of those well, groups. Yeah, the vocal powerhouses from all these groups, except for um, Ishin, because Hyojin is the and Ishin's kind of the one bringing it down a little bit. But uh, Ishin's not is the one that's kind of not pulling his weight, but right. everyone else is pulling so much weight that yes. they're, he's fine. He's right. up a lot. He's with also him. it's like he's not ruining it, but he is not no. pulling his weight as much as everybody else is. At the same time, I just want to like this. I remember keeping up a little bit with Mix Nine, and like at the end when I heard about, it, I'm like, "Well, what did Mix Nine give us?" And everyone was like, "Uh, this is whatever. Yeah. This is fine." I was very involved and in Mix Nine, unfortunately. Mix, you were involved in the mix. I was not. I come into this later, and I'm like, what "The fuck is this? Yeah, what is? It's a transcendent performance, and it it, it should go down as like one of the best K-pop covers. But no one has seen it because look at the people that are in it, and it's yes. on Mix Nine. What was it crazy? Because when I so when I was watching Mix Nine, I was like, I'm not gonna watch that. I'm only gonna look up the K and K performances because that's all I cared about at the time was what well, K and K was doing. for you. And then this round that I looked up, two of them were in this one, and then Sang Jun was in My House, which is also an insane cover to come off of this show. Is the My House cover? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I watched the two of those, and it's like, well, shit, now I gotta watch this show because those were fantastic. <laughs> like, the um, thing with this is that this cover specifically to me is a song that would never be covered anywhere else. No, no other show produce would never do this. No Mix company Nine specific show does would never do some this. Some weird, weird songs to cover on yeah. Mix Nine because Mix Nine also covers "It's You" by Super Junior, and that song they would never do. get covered on a show anywhere else. No, and it shouldn't. I don't think that's like these songs are such a high caliber because, like, "Love in the Ice" isn't even really a title track. No, it's like a kind of it's, a deep cut. It's it's, cu- it's a deep like. Is when did Mix Nine come out? Like ten years ago at this point. Twenty seventeen. I twenty seventeen. I want to say yeah. Like at that time, even that would have been like a over ten year old deep cut. Yeah, semi deep cut into TV excuses. Like if you know, you know. But like a lot of people like, didn't know. Right. Wild, insane. It's an insane cover. So good. <laughs> I mean, I'll give. I mean, I will give the show this when it hit. It hit. It hit. It was honestly. 
because this aired at the same time as the unit, a much more interesting show than the unit. The but unit is not on my list. Is it on no, yours? Because nope. it didn't even come near. The unit was a bad, a bad show overall. Mix Nine had better covers and was more entertaining, and also was more of a shit show. But that was kind. Of, that kind of adds to the element of entertainment yeah. in a way. Yeah. So anyway, that here we are. Yep. Love it. Absolutely adore it. What's my number six? Oh, it also <laughs> makes nice love on the ice. <laughs> I knew it was around here somewhere, it's but I didn't want to like yeah. accidentally get it wrong. Right. And then just show you a random other cover. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, phenomenal. Can Everything I tell about you, it, 10 I've, out of 10. I forgot about this cover for a long time. Do you, and this, I replaced it Um, because this was originally two's Can't Hurry Love in this spot. And then oh, I, and then the more I good. looked into that, I was like, I kind of don't like that being there. And then I was like, there's got to be something I'm missing. And then I was like, oh yeah, Love on the Ice. Please, at some point I was like, what's that one Mix 9 cover I really like? Really and then I just yeah. looked up Mix 9 right, and I was right. like, no, it's not that one. What the fuck is it? And then I saw this, and I'm like, I'm oh, like, it's oh, this. Oh, yes, there it is. It's That's this. The one. Of course it's this. Mm-hmm. Of course it's of always course. been this. Yes. Love it. Yes, yes. Absolutely love it. It's great. And the weird thing is all of the great shit came out of the, out of the men. I know. <laughs> I always forget that it's all it's a co-ed it show, because co-ed nothing show. about the women, like, stuck in my brain. I know. Nothing there was about the nothing women. interesting going on there. Like, the the men got all the good covers, The man. most interesting thing in that show is that Ryujin of Itzy was on there um, pre debut Yeah, but, like, th- nothing about that really, like, was like, oh, yeah, no, her, right, her, that right. cover was great. No, nope, no, nothing. Nothing. Nothing from the woman half of that show. <laughs> but the men... Thrive. The men were thriving. Thriving. Yeah, even though in the end, it, no and one then thrived no one thrived on at show. the end, and then we have to sue YG Entertainment, and then I think and YG Entertainment Black was the happy face for suing them. So it was a whole yep. situation, but you know, it's it was fine. a whole thing. We're past right, this. You're no- halfway through, halfway through. So my number five is Bad Boy by Lucy, oh. originally by Red Velvet. <laughs> That one was up there for me. I really like that one. I think what really gets me without this is because Bad Boy is like not a song that I enjoy. It's a fine no. it's a fine song, but I don't love it or anything. Truly it's sounds not the like magnum opus it's not. That, that everyone else seems to think it is. Truly sounds like a different song when Lucy covers it. Oh no, it's such a different vibe. It's so different and it's so good. Like they do such a and this was I think a thing that they released before they even debuted. Mm-hmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, holy shit, this is so good. <laughs> This was such an exciting thing for Lucy because it was like this, and then you get flowering, and you're like, they got, like, they got, layers. they got the violin. Got vibes. It's so, it's so good. But like Ugh. the violin, but it can go moody, it can go places, and we can go places with this group, right? But it's, it sounds so different, and it's so good. It fits the Lucy vibe so well, mm. and it, I think it's just like, so creative and so interesting what they did with it, um, an arrangement. Um, but I love it. It's great. Mm-hmm. I also just oh, love I, Lucy. Lucy does a lot of great covers. Lucy's phenomenal. I mean, much like we keep saying, bands just keep doing great covers. Exactly. And they're so good. Yeah. And the 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 violin just adds so much. Lucy having a violin truly lets them do so much more as a band. Like yeah. they're they it makes them so much more interesting because of that. And and not it's just great. that, but everyone else is just absolutely thriving. I know. Like every it's just so good and they're the so good so good and it's it's just feels like a different song like you can tell it's bad boy because of course it is but like it feels like a different they song. truly change it so much in that cover um mm-hmm. in, in a good way so yeah it's great absolutely all right my number five mm-hmm. is oh one wee's cover of hip Ooh, that's a Originally really good my one Mamamoo. it's a really good cover there's a lot of one wee covers i was thinking about yeah but this uh when we does a lot of mama moo covers but they're all really good i mean they're all in the same company so it all works out but no this one was like because i like hip well sung by mama moo but i think this weirdly works better for me really good because somehow i think they're sassier and i don't know how they are in some way (laughs) i don't know maybe it's the keytar I don't know. Guitar makes it more sassy. <laughs> but I will always love One Wee's thing of having both a keyboard and a guitar. I love that. In the same performance. The same song. Like, it's great. It's like, hold on, I gotta, I gotta get the key I gotta out. switch the guitar real fast. Sorry. I mean, I will say I appreciate any group that 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 has a guitar. Yeah, definitely. 
And again, I do think One Wee just has a lot of versatility. They have a good rapper. They have a tendency to just showcase a lot of solos, which I really love. Uh huh. I don't know. I just really enjoy this cover a lot. They it works for them somehow. They have the right vibe to cover Mama Moo, and I do think that's a they lot do, of the is weirdly almost more so than the vocal ability to cover Mama Moo, which obviously is important. Right. I think the vibe ability to cover Mama Moo is also really important, which is why like I think groups like Seventeen and One we do them really well, and then other groups it's like eh, mm-hmm. this is fine. One way though, they do. They one way like like the bands again. Bands do so many great covers, and, bands I, and it's do because, a lot we of are covers. we are big band people here, obviously. And I feel like band covers are always like a little bit better. I mean, there was always way. going to be bands on these lists. We were oh, always like, going to we were the always going to have here. the bands here. The bands thrive where other yes, people falter. Exactly. Plus the fact that seeing some of these songs played on real instruments when they were never played on real, when they were never even made with real instruments right. is real fun. Yes, definitely. Like, it's both, like both why people like, hip and bad boy were not yeah. made with real instruments. And it's like why um people like seeing like band versions of like groups doing their songs like, when they go yeah. on concerts when they have a live band and that's like just elevates the song. Or when so they much do, more. what's that one? What's that one YouTube channel that does like <sighs> what, here's what is a it? live band version? I think it's just called oh. It's Live now that just does live yeah. band versions of stuff. Yeah. And like some of those songs should not were never intended to be done by real instruments, right. so it's like questionable. Like some of them but are like, real weird sounding, but they sound real off. Yeah, but like these groups do them so well. Mm-hmm. Bravo! Right. We love a band. Number four. My number four is Icons Jig Jin. Uh, uh, um, D- original by Treasure. It made it this high because truly this should be an icon song. They this really took this song from Treasure song. and turned it into an icon song and made it so much better. <laughs> they and I like Jigjin normally. Right, I think it's that a song fine song normally. But, but if you listen icon to you listen, elevated. it's so good. You listen to them back to back. The Treasure version is just missing something. Like icon, it's missing the iconness. Of they it just all. took it and they there's like nope, this Ran is our this it. is our song now, and it's so good. Like truly, not I feel like that, that should be I their song. That, not just that, but I think that everything that Treasure does, Icon has it better. Yes, absolutely. Like, they are <laughs> somehow they are better vocalists by far. They have a better rapper by far. Yep. And I don't know what it is. I think it's maybe YG's absolute lack of choreo experience. Right. But, like, generally speaking, the Treasure might be better dancers because they probably had more training than Icon. Right, right. But for YG-style choreo, which is real basic and entirely based on, here, make this simple movement look cool, Mm -hmm. Icon's better at it. They are. And I feel like um, part of it is probably got to do somewhat with the state of YG entertainment in the yeah. time where Icon was a group where YG was kind of at their peak and as whereas their treasure is a group and it took them f- like several years after their survival show to debut and for YG to get their shit together yeah. enough to even debut them I feel like they get really shafted in a lot of areas because of that um and also I do think that it it it, it also includes the fact that treasure is them trying to be a traditional boy group right where I do think they icon have different expectations. It's just out icon. here being an icon and like don't icon give a will sh- never change. Never change icon. Yeah. Never change. Never change. But it's so love good. I really them. wish we had like some official version of this because it's it's so good. Oh, I love if this we had a of studio song, version so of this, I would never listen I, to Treasure. Yeah, I would never listen. Not to that. Not that I listen to <laughs> Jigjin a lot right? ever, but I would listen to the icon well, I would version listen to this. so much. Yeah, this would be the only version I li- because they could. This could have. The, the thing about this that I love is just the sheer amount of unnecessary effort. Yes. That went into it's this. It's so high this, effort and for why. It's like. Because they're out here learning all the dance. Not just that, but they recorded it and sung it themselves. Yes. Not just that. But Bobby writes his own rap. Yes. Not just that, but they adapt the choreo because, like, not, it's not just a basic. They're not all in frame just doing the dance. They're, like, there's formations, yes. there's movement, there's camera angles. There's no reason for them to put there's as this no much effort for in for, like, a half cover of Jig Jin, and it was so good. <laughs> this so felt good as one. high effort as that one time that Treasure had to, like, remix their own song. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's the equal amount of yes. effort, and one of them is an icon cover of Jig Jin. Of half of Jig Jin. It's not even the whole song. It's, it's like even, half of it. God. 
it was the whole thing, I would never listen to normal Jixian. I know. It's, Not that I listen to that that often, but like it would be the only thing. It's I listen so good. To. It's it really. It's appreciate so Icon people because like we're we're here for two things. We stand for like four things on this podcast. One icon, of them is one support of them is the icon. Band, and two is Icon. Yes. No one else will do it. No, we have to. Mm-hmm. All right, my number four. Uh huh. Oh, it's Astro Ooh. and Oh My Girl, The Red Shoes. Cute. Uh, originally by IU at the 2019 NBC Music Festival. Yes, yes. Uh, I think this is just the absolute ad- most adorable thing I've it's ever so seen. It's so cute. It's adorable. I also want to say that it is truly my favorite, like, male group collabing with a female group. Yeah. Just because I think that there's this, there's the right energy there. They got the same they feel concepts. like they've met. Right. Before we started doing, like, it didn't seem like, hi, I'm Unwu. Hi, I'm y- I'm Yua. Right. Pleasure to meet you. Like, ten seconds before we started rolling. Right. There's decent amount of interaction. It doesn't feel forced. They're thriving together. Yes. I didn't know I needed the red shoes to be a duet. Right. But here and we, yet here we here are. Here we are, and it's great. It's so good. Oh, I love it. So I love everything about it. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend. It yes, It truly yes. is. It's one of the only times, and I usually hate when there is not an equal number of men and women on a stage. Right. This works somehow. It does. They made it work. Love, love it. Love it so much. It's a great little performance. Very fun. Very cute. And this is what, again, I think the these music festivals, I think, I don't want to be cynical and be like, well, it's because the fans are being mean, but it's partially that. But yeah. I also think... The sheer quantity does make this hard to do now. Right. Because you don't have the time to do this when you have to do four other ones the same week. Yeah, it's, that is true. Or when you have to, like, oh, they're doing the, I mean, I get the the, the Western recognitions needed, but it's like, oh, shit, they also got to be at the Billboard Awards right, in three days, right. so we also got to coordinate international We got to go on, like, Good Morning America for some reason, like, or something yeah, real it, stupid, yeah. Which, again, you can do that. They don't need to be in studio for that. They don't. It's fine. Just do that via like, my telecast God. in Korea. Mm-hmm. Like, again, I do think that part of what is, like, fan perception, but fan perception's always been shitty, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I do also think it's, like, the sheer quantity of these shows is too many. Yeah. Because you lose opportunities for shit like this. Exactly. That's also a thing that I don't think a lot of people, it's not a thing I've ever seen people bring up as to why these don't happen, mm-hmm. where I'm like, no, they just don't have the time. When would they do it? Right. <laughs> they should, <laughs> do you want them to cut out more sleep? Seriously. Ugh. I don't know. I just love this performance. I want another one. But it's a great. It not with Astro No My Girl, but like with somebody. Right, right. Like we need like equivalent type groups to do it in a way that is not weird. Like, because I also like when it happens like uh, outside company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like within company lines, it's easy to do. But right. like outside company lines, you kind of just got to like go with some vibes here. Mm-hmm. It would be the equivalent. Um, that's a great, I think girl group is what I'm really hung up on, is what girl group would do it. That would be, like, an equivalent, like, not, because it wouldn't be, like, an Espo would be an equivalent. No. And, like, New Jeans also doesn't even feel like a no. right equivalent. So it's, like, that's where I'm hung up on, is what girl group would do it. <laughs> I don't know. My thought is something like a Lee, Lee Seraphim a little too big, but, yeah. like, a Lee Seraphim with, like, a, uh, I'm trying to think of a new boy group. That's, like, relative. It's hard. It's hard, man. Dripping? No, no. Too old. Too old. It would be like Lee Seraphim with like even like ZV1 would like match a vibe. That'd be a real fun. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Though it would be very different than them doing the red. Very different. It would Lee be Seraphim. a very different performance, but I feel like that's close ish to a similar. I, uh, I think ZV1 might be a little too big, but I think we could make it work. Yeah. The five and nine. Both seems of those, a yeah. Both of those big. groups are both a little bit too big as well. So, yeah, uh, I think five. We would need. I think you'd need a group bigger than Lee Seraphim, or like a I group think, smaller I think than the way that. I think the way. Oh my girl, because I think Oh my girl at this point is like six and seven. Yeah, which I think works well with these two. So I think you need. It can't be like more than one or two off. Right. It can't be five and nine. <laughs> What would we do with four of them? I know. Oh, what if we get like Stacy? That's a nice. That's Ooh. a good. That's a good option, Stacy. That's a good option. Yeah. 
that we we've we've made it work. Get Stacy and uh, ZB one. Yes, that we've would done be it. totally like we've done it. <laughs> but what if we got like Stacy with instead of ZB one like boy next door or something? That would be real cute. Yeah. Or if you want to do something a little bit older, even like a Stacy and like a TXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, those are vibes. We figured it we out. Like the vibes. We've cracked we figured the code. it out. Stacy and TXT. <laughs> yes. All right. Thrive. Thrive. All right, so my number three is So Hot by Vix. Ah, uh, this was almost on mine. It's so good. It's so funny. The best drag cover. The best far. drag cover. It's for original song by the Runner Girls, and it's from the 2013 Shoe Sock Special Star Face Off. What a, what a, like, a hot mess of a performance. What a performance. But also, like, one of what the most s- entertaining things I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> I mean, you have the full range of reactions to having yes. to do a drag cover. You have Leo refusing. I Leo simply didn't. will not show up to this. <laughs> yeah. I know he was injured at the time, but also he would have refused. Not, con- not um, convinced he didn't throw himself down the stairs to not be in this. You know, Thrive, mm-hmm. uh, you have, like... Hongbin uh, looks like he Hongbin, wants to die. Hongbin, who looks good, but wants to die. Hongbin does not want to be here. Hyuk and Ravi, who do not change anything about their performance no. at all. No. Like, just, I am man. I am a man, but also- I am a man, this is but a- also look at my shorts. Yes. Yeah. Change, specifically Ravi. Ravi specifically about is just performing, because Ravi. Ken- trying to be trying to be high yes Just, i think in like ken the is of, like, trying look so at hard me. yeah huh? and then n is living and having the time of his Thriving. life having the absolute time Love of his it. life definitely the reason why they're doing this in the first place <laughs> oh i i love this performance just because there, there were many of those in this era of K-pop. So many. You, uh, most people remember the something performance. Yeah, and then there's the B2B Dum Dum is another there's one. There's the B2B Dum Dum. There's one I think is extremely underrated, but also very hard to find now, which is the, uh, Sung the Jung's, Sungjong Magic uh, Girl. Magic Girl yeah, performance. Yeah, that's also With two one. other people who I forget. But it's mainly Sungjong wearing the it's original Sung dress Jung- of that um, as well. Nana's original dress. It's worrying <laughs> yeah. how much that fits. I know. It's worrying this one there um many of there's those, many but... that was the era of k-pop um for this but it, this K-pop is drag. this one by far um for me the most memorable and this by one far the best feels the most weirdly respectful yes it does because the it thing does. about some of those performances is they felt very ha ha men in drag right ha ha this weirdly just felt like we're gonna do this thing yeah it's part of the comedy it's fine but we also respect this women. feels like the closest to like, like an that. actual drag actual drag performance would be yes. like this is like yes. matching that vibe the best out of all of these types of covers for sure i love it so much yeah it's so it's good. so good it's so funny it's so hot it's so hot overall and like and actually great. looks good he does <laughs> he does look great good. everyone else questionable Ken with the Robbie full looks- armpit hair is really funny, though. I think yeah, they purposely put Ken in a tank top with full armpit hair, I think, adds a lot to it. Because I do think, like, if they had kept it the same for all of them, but, like, Ken being it, because it could have been yes, Ravi, right. but that just would have been, like, the same with he- I am Ravi, I am man. Right. Which is the characterization I give Ravi in this performance. I am a man. <laughs> yeah. I am Ravi, I am man. Yeah. <laughs> Hyuk also has a little bit of that where he does not change his performance. Right. He's like at a, all. he's like acting cute, but he's just acting like how Hyuk but he's acts. Just acting like like himself. that's how Hyuk acts and stuff. Like that's he's just being him, yeah. And Hanbin looks genuinely embarrassed, which I think <gasps> works looks, when it's only one of them. Hanbin looks scared for his life by all this yeah. performance. Which I think works when it's only one of them. The fact yeah. that the other four have at least if not embraced it, been like, okay, this is I'm just what we're wearing doing. different clothes. Yeah. This is what we're doing. Exactly. Love it. It's great. It's a great cover. Love that so much. All right. My number three is SF9's The Stealer. Yes. From Kingdom Legendary War. Yes. I, so there's a lot of covers in the Kingdom Queen of So many. So many. Um, Destiny could have been on here. Destiny was an right. option because Destiny is a, oh my girl song. It's not a lovely song. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry. Uh, it could have been like. Full Dash is not a cover. Fine. Right. Uh, it could have also been, like, a bunch of other things. Like, Move is really great by SF9 yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But this is a performance. It's a whole action movie. In a... It's a whole 
concept. Just uh, to there spoil a little. My, so my there number is two fire. is The Stealer by SF9. Ah, just to get that out of the way right now. <laughs> it performs. There is guns. There, there is, is fire. There is, a, there is too many shirts. There, is there are no shirts. Several, there is mob wives. There's a knife things. fight in the middle. There's oh. a knife fight where we blur the knife. Yes. There is criminal mastermind there's a Pro-wood. heist. There's a heist. There's a heist. It is. It's a whole it action perfor- movie in a performance. It is also what most people thought the Steeler, the song would have been. I right, remember a heist. Do you remember those the teasers? Teaser? Oh, they were so good. That teaser for the Steeler. Oh my god, was so good. So I remember when that teaser came out. We watched it. So much. So we it, were obsessed. That with was that one of the best K-pop teasers ever. It's, was teasers I for the Steeler. I still think it is the best K-pop teaser ever made. So good because it made me excited for a song that turned out to be just mediocre. Yeah, just saying. But this is what the Steeler could have been. Can you imagine the teaser for the Steeler, but make it this? Also, uh, I think they remix the Steeler because this is better than the. the it boys is. Version. It is better. There's a than remix the boys in there somewhere. There is. It's definitely remixed, and it I is. I can't so tell good. exactly what they did, but they did something. They it's better. They brought the drama. They really added in a lot of drama they to the Steeler. All the drama. It's so. I good. also. It's so good. Like, what more could you possibly ask for when you're covering? the sealer i know it's they incredible. did they did exactly what the song was is about and what it should have been to begin with and then they made a whole action movie and like a five four or five minute performance it's just it's so good it's one of the Another- best it's the best thing like mm-hmm. one of the most like complex like stagings ever on this show too Oh, absolutely. Um, and they deserved also, that after they got fucked over that first round, so. Oh, absolutely. I also want to point out that I do think that the only other song in the entire produce catalog that could hold a candle to it mm-hmm. is AT's doing Wonderland. We, I keep wanting to say it's Wave. It's not. It's yeah, Wonderland. Right. But the thing that elevates this, because they also had too much going on. Right. This one fits the song better because yeah. while AT's is pirate concept, Wonderland is not. Right, right, right. And also, this elevates the song. Yeah. I do think that that much going on in that AT's performance kind of makes that song a li- It's on par, if not a little bit distracting. There's from moments the song. in that AT's this one elevates. that are like, that don't need to be there. But for this whole yeah. thing, it's like every moment has a purpose because we're telling a heist, like a heist movie, like yeah. gangster heist movie. Like it's, it's so good. It's so good. And the, this is one of the few times where so much of our criticisms of every Kingdom Queendom season is it always felt like idea first, song later. Right. Like, oh, we want to do everything that the boys did in that second season, which is we're going to just we're gonna Game of Game Thrones. We're going to Game of Thrones like, everything. You don't know what songs you're doing yet. Right. How are you just going to make it everything Game of is Game first? of Thrones. Yeah. Or like back in Road to Kingdom where it was like, yeah, we're going to do Go Go Bebe, but now it's Aladdin. Like, like what yeah. are we doing here? It felt idea first song second this is elevating a song that already has a story yes because look what because they know when not to do a gimmick because like move for example does not tell a story right they could have come up with a fucking weird story to tell in move right but it's just like artsy as hell it's just vibes it's like artsy and like they're sexy and like that's it they're doing a great job that's all you need that's all they need and, like, they don't make those, like, weird ladies that just keep coming up like a weird robot story. Right. They could have. They could have. It would have been worse, but they could have. Move is, like, a lot and of like, vibes, and it's it's great yeah. for that song. And, like, I don't know, freaking, uh, what's it called? What's, uh, Believer. Yeah. Just mirrors. The vibe right. is mirrors. Not a story, just mirrors. Yeah. Love that. And that's great. That you performance don't... also fantastic. Like, they and got like, it. does a story help elevate? Sure, but it can also detract. Mm-hmm. It can also detract, which I think is the biggest problem in that show. Yeah, that, that show in particular has a big problem with that. Like, across all iterations of that show. Because, <laughs> like, Destiny. Destiny has vibes. It doesn't have a, like, one-to-one story going through. Right. It's just vibes. All Sometimes of the all best performances on that show are the ones where it's like there's a concept, but we don't take it too far. Because the other and one I go to elevate. is the one us the boys heroine, and mm. that's like a super simple concept just about their own lives as K-pop idols, and that's yeah. fantastic. And the message gets across really well, and it's really really good. So we love that. Fantastic, fantastic. 
Oh, I guess you did. Your yeah, so you go two, again because so this two. is my number two. Yeah. My number two is I. Oh, of course, Jean. there it is again. <laughs> again, they made this better. Yeah, it's I a better think song. my favorite covers are just the ones where they take the song. They're like mine. This now. is our song now. <laughs> this is mine now. Yep. I am Icon. This is Icon's Jixie. Yes. Who cares about treasure? No, that's Icon's song now. That's also, theirs. in my mind, this was... I know that it's probably not true, but in my mind, this was all done in one take and treasure... Because treasure comes in at the end and, like, does the YG ending chorus with them. Right. In my mind, treasure's just Those sitting there in the corner Those are backup dancers. Being like, uh, honestly, I, I forget that treasure's there. I, fr- I keep thinking those are just, like, backup dancers. Yeah. In my mind, treasure's just there in the corner being like... Yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit, this is our song Holy and they shit. did it better than us. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Bobby wrote a rap to our song yeah. and it's better than we could do. I know. It's the same it's the same way I would be so curious just to be in the heads of not to go back to Queendom, uh-huh. but to be in the heads of those lovelies girls. Yeah. When they're like Well fuck. Holy shit. <laughs> well fuck. <laughs> that's their song now. Oh, that's an well, old girl I guess song. We just now. gave it up. Yep. Our most po- our one of our most popular songs. It's gone now. It's not ours. Yep, yep. Same thing with Jigjin. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not mine now. Right. It's Icons. Yes. As it always should have been. It should have. That... They should have just given that song to Icon. That that could have been it's a fantastic a Icon, Icon song. song. Icon. A lot of people are like, well, Icon washed after Love Scenario. Icon never washed. Never. Icon always thriving. Just like you just don't know. Never, never washed for Icon. Never wash. For Icon, never wash. Yep. You're number two. Well, my, my number two is Oh, Steeler. number one, sorry. So my number one is What's Good it? For You by P1 Harmony. Oh, I did. This was like my number 11. Literally, I was so close to putting this on mine. This is also another one that is like so high effort and for why. It's oh, like. Yeah. No, there's such a music video to there's this. There's a whole what? music video. It's got great visuals. It's got sets. And it, they sound so good. And there's like not any other version of this other than this music video. It's like they made a, like, a very high effort music video and a very high effort cover. Like, and for what? Just for fun. Like, just for no reason at all. And they sound great. This is exactly the type of like vibe of a song that they do an absolutely great job at doing. It's so good. They mm-hmm. write their own raps in the middle of it, too, and it's like, it feels like they are the absolutely correct group to be covering this song and covering it so well. Um, mm-hmm. I think, and I feel like that's, like, the big thing I want out of groups to cover anything. It's like, I want the right groups to be covering the right songs and, like, to get the vibe right, and they do all of that, and it's so high effort. Oh, no. Anytime I was like, oh, an Olivia Rodrigo K-pop cover. Mm-hmm. It was a choice. Yeah. And then P1 Harmony comes out with this. And it's, it's just like, so holy high shit. Effort. So high and effort. It's like such a perfect group to do it. Because this was around like also the do 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 doom doom yeah. doom era. Right. That, that 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 song. Right, right. And like it just worked so well for everything P1 Harmony has done since and especially was doing that. Oh, definitely. It's like it's so those good. perfect vibe wise and this is just like was an extra thing they just did for fun. Um, oh yeah, no. It was just all vibe, all good vibes. And it's so good. The music video so high effort and for so why. So much effort? Yeah. Loved it. Loved everything about so it. So good. My number one is not this. Uh-huh. My number one is Perfect Ooh, Man. That's a I good one too. I think this is so, uh, originally by Shinwa, the 2015 NBC Music Festival, I think, truly speaking, this feels like the passing of the torch. Yeah. Uh, to BTS. It's like, not that Shinwa was the group. Right. But, like, no. These are the boys mm-hmm. now. F- 2015 was a big BTS year. It no was a huge BTS it. year. It was the B- That it was, was the BTS the year. The beginning. It wasn't the BTS year in America, but it was the beginning of the BTS renaissance era. We're still in the BTS era, I feel like. Yeah. God knows if we'll ever leave the BTS era. We might never I don't, leave that I think, era. I think the bar is too high. Mm-hmm. They're going to come back and win a Grammy. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. Just because I feel like the story of from military to Grammy feels too good. Yeah. And I think they'd finally do it. Right, right. Like, they're going to come back, win a Grammy, and then we're going to be like, well, we're never going to leave the BTS era. But this performance is just so good. It's so 90s, but the best way possible. It is full of personality. It is full of everything. It works for them because it is not a BTS that I don't think 
BTS, especially in 2015, was not, you know, this feels like the the boy group, quintessential boy group. BTS was never the quintessential boy group. Mm-hmm. But they made it work. It feels like such a fun time. They all look like they're having a great time. Jimin is a star in this. He's thriving. I do wish, you know, RM, at the time, Rap Monster, Jesus, I don't think I've said that name in years. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Was not there, right? Remember, this would have been Rap Monster. This was Rap Monster era? Huh? I it feels so weird to say it now. Uh-huh. Like who's Rap Monster? I don't know him. Ah, uh, I think it's really good. I really enjoy it. I think it felt like a like a moment. Mm-hmm. And it, I do. It has more views than the music video ever will. But that music video is I so mean, old. It's nothing so matters. Old. Yeah, <laughs> but. And Again, I do. We have also extensively talked about how Perfect Man is like a. That is that is the second, first that is the first gen, gen K pop song like that, that is, is the, the one. first gen K pop song and I do That's think the one. It, it fits for the biggest K pop group to cover the best yeah first gen K pop song because I do think BTS is extremely selective because especially K pop covers that they do right it's a lot of first gen it's yeah. not a lot of like they only ever really because they did Soteji. They've done sex skis. I think they did other things, but like it's never really been of the time. Right, K-pop. right. It was always older, which I do think. I don't know if this is on purpose, right? But I do think it's kind of fun and like very themed, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it does. It feels weirdly correct for them to be doing. That. Yeah, because like I know they've done a bunch of like Western covers because they've done right. like Coldplay and all that. Right, and right. I know that they're all friends, but yeah. like. K-pop specifically, it's always yeah. They don't do a lot of BTS. Like they Mm -hmm. never did a lot of K-pop specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even when they were they were too small because they were things, so they wouldn't have been included in like big covers. Right, right. They were never out here doing. All right, time for the BTS cover of Fantastic Baby. Yeah, time for the BTS to cover. I don't know, Wolf by EXO. Mm Hmm. Uh, you know, I think it again. I really enjoy this cover. I think it was a moment, Very and it good. was one that I do. I it, every once in a while, when I think about Perfect Man, I realize yeah. that it's not Shinwa singing in my head. It's BTS. Right, it's the one you. Re- do it's one really you remember. It. Yeah, it's a it's a memorable one. Mm-hmm. So these are our top ten top K-pop ten K-pop covers. K-pop covers of all time. Hooray! Hooray! There's probably there's these definitely some I forgot. Um because I Oh no. These are the There's so many I forgot. So many I forgot. I probably. There's probably one that people are going to be like why the hell isn't the, don't you love this cover cuz we've said it somewhere and I have completely just forgotten like, it exists. Well also yeah, with the the like the one Road to Kingdom Queendom series and then the one Produce was also very limiting for the list, but we wanted yeah, the variety. That does limit so it. here we fair, are. Fair. Yep, yep. Um, but that has been the first ever K-pop themed top 10 beatdown for us, or top 10 showdown Yay. is the name of it. Uh, we'll bring one back be- later. Yes, we will. Um, but yes, we will, are, are, we are available on all major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We also have a YouTube channel where we put all of our episodes along with clip videos occasionally as well. And if you want to watch our fun PowerPoints for this episode, you can do that there. Or um, if the podcast thing you're listening to has video versions, uh, you can see it there too. Uh, But with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.